Hello, welcome to this session. The title of this session is Cinematography. The art and technique of capturing still images of objects using the mechanical device called camera is known as photography. Cinematography is the art of capturing a series of still images of a particular action using a cinematographic camera. These series of still images when projected at a particular speed would give the illusion of motion. It's this illusion of movement across certain number of still images which is responsible for the words like movie or motion picture or photoplay which are used to refer to cinema. Actual cinema or movies in real sense originated with the invention of the cinematography, a portable motion capturing and motion projection device invented by the Louis brothers, Louis Lumiere and Auguste Lumiere in 1895. Thomas Alva Edison's invention of kinetograph in 1891 was another major developmental phase in cinematography. However, kinetograph was not as successful as the Lumiere cinematography. Learning objectives of this lesson. To enable the learner to draw a comparison between human eye and cinematography camera, to understand the various types of cinematographic shots, to understand the aesthetics of different cinematographic shots, to comprehend the visual language of film with special reference to its cinematography. In the early history of motion capturing practice, the size of the cinematographic camera was a real challenge. The heavy and cumbersome early cinematography camera forced the cinematographer or the director of photography DOP to fix the camera in a particular place. Zooming, tilting, panning and other types of camera movements were not possible in the early stage of cinematography. A knowledge of the essential features of cinematography is a necessary prerequisite to comprehend a film or movie in a more systematic way. A photographic or cinematographic camera is known as the mechanical eye, which has got many advantages and shortcomings in comparison with the human biological eye. However, the basic structure of both the camera and the human eye remains similar. Both are extremely light sensitive. Human eyes have endless properties which can very quickly change their focal length or they can accommodate itself with the distance of the objects from eye to capture the sharpest image of an object. However, in the case of camera lens, focal lengths are generally manually adjusted though automatic or default focusing is possible. The most important capability of human eye is that by default human eyesight is three-dimensional or 3D. 3D indicates three quantitative properties of an object width, height and depth. Images captured with photographic camera will have only two dimensions height and width which makes the image 2D. It's through the pupil that light enters into the biological eye. In camera the entry of light is through the aperture, a hole or opening in the camera. Therefore function wise pupil in human eye and aperture in camera are similar. In human eye the iris decides the quantity of light entering into the eye by automatically making the size of iris larger or smaller. Whereas in the case of camera, the quantity of light entering into the lens is controlled by the diaphragm. It's on retina, which is situated at the far end of the internal structure of eye, the images of course inverted of objects are captured in the human eye. In the case of the camera, this function of capturing the image or object is carried out by the film stock or an electronic material attached at the back of the camera. The greatest advantage of the mechanical eye or the camera is that it can record the images of an object permanently.
whereas human eye cannot record images in a concrete form on a permanent basis. Human eye captures light and sends it to the brain through electronic signals to process the light into an image. We cannot retrieve an image captured by the biological organ eye. But retrieval is quite possible in the case of an image captured either with the celluloid or digital camera. This much little background information on the biological organ eye and the mechanical device camera will be useful in understanding the various dimensions of cinematography. The word cinematography literally means writing the movement which combines two Greek words kinema and graphene which means movement and to write respectively. So cinematography is the technical process of writing movement or motion with the mechanical device known as camera. Camera in filmmaking replaces the function of the pen carries out in the process of literary writing. That's why the French film critic Alexandre Ostruck coined the phrase camera stylo, which means camera pen, to refer to the fresh cinematic idiom expressed in the French New Wave films of 1950s and 1960s. Three types of cinematography is possible on the basis of the method and material used to write or record motion or movement. In the manual cinematography, images or text are drawn with hand on the nitrate film stock. In digital cinematography, a kind of electronic movement writing happens, whereas in the case of film cinematography, which uses chemical film stock, a chemical movement writing happens. Technological advancements like the availability of lightweight portable movie camera and more light sensitive image recording platforms like film stock and digital canvas have redefined cinematographic methods, styles and stock taking practices etc. The material platforms in which a cinematographic camera is mounted also brings in aesthetically fresh shots of different nature. For example, a handheld cinematographic camera becomes more penetrative into narrow locational or set spaces, making it possible to follow the character thereby very closely, thereby making the shots longer and closer. Similarly, crane mounted camera and drone mounted camera bring in visuals which are beyond the prowess and capacity of the human eyes. The range of cinematographic style is primarily experienced by the film spectator in the form of various types of shots. Each type of shot having a correspondent stylistic and aesthetic dimensions. The invention of new image recording technology and new image capturing equipment extends and enlarges the number and types of cinematographic shots. A cinematographic shot is labeled on the basis of these five factors. One, the distance of camera from the shot object. Two, the angle of camera with regard to the position of the object. 3. The camera movement while taking a shot. 4. The type of lens or filters covering used for taking a shot. And 5. The fixing or changing of lens focus applied while taking a shot. Camera distance and types of shots. A cinematographic camera can be placed at different distances. This distance is measured in terms of the distance between the camera and the object shot. The longer the distance, the smaller the object is seen in the frame. The closer the distance, the larger the object is seen in the frame. The following ranges of shots are possible by rearranging the distances. Extreme close-up. Extreme close-up shot is achieved by bringing the camera's focal length to the maximum closest possible proximity to the object being shot. 
Here a specific part of the body of the object is shot in a magnified and detailed scale, isolating it from external references. Extreme close-up shot is a visual fragmentation process which is possible with the human eye also. Such shots are used to generate and augment terror, emotion, eroticism, repulsion, etc. Any part of the human body can be caught in a stream close up shot depending on what has to be communicated with such a shot. Female lips and other body parts are caught in extreme close ups to bring in eroticism. Male eyes could be shot in extreme close up to suggest anger and desire. Extreme close up of tearful eyes could suggest sadness, etc. Extreme close up shots shown in isolation can be used to hide from the audience further information of a person or object as of now. In extreme close ups, the image completely fills the camera frame, occupying 100% of the frame space. Close up shot. A close-up shot normally features human head from shoulder upwards. A close-up shot generates a feeling of intimacy among the audience. It places the object of the shot in its immediate background, thereby connecting the object with an outer reference. This shot is also called big close-up, which is normally used to highlight the character's facial expressions. For a film actor, Close-up shots pose extreme challenge on his performance at the minute test level. A subcategory of close-up shot is the insert close-up shot, which further provides the audience some more details in between long shots. The object shot in close-up fills in almost 50% of the camera frame. Medium close-up shots. Medium close-up shots normally capture one third of the size of the object captured. In the case of human beings, from chest upwards. This shot also places the object within a definite physical environment. However, the audience's look could be still on the central object captured, which fills in about 30% of the camera frame. Where the main character's body movement is not involved, medium close-up shots are preferred. Medium shot. Medium shot is generally used to capture dialogue sequences which involve character movements and gestures. It's also called a waist shot because human figures in this shot are captured waist upward. This shot provides more details on the temporal and spatial information within which the plot is unfolded. This shot also allows the audience to watch the actions happening around the principal object of the shot. In this shot, the surroundings, characters, setting and acting are given an almost equal focus. These types of shots could have multiple pointers. Medium long shots. In a typical medium long shot, Human figures are generally captured from knee upwards. A medium long shot is also known as the American shot because this type of shot was very frequently used in American movie genre westerns in order to show the gangsters or hero along with his gun hostlers tied in his waist. In these kinds of shots, more characters can be depicted and more spatial planes can be shown. At times, the surroundings of the object shot are also given preference in medium long shot. Long shot or wide shot. Long shot is also known as a wide shot. Even though there is a central object captured in the shot, the surroundings dominate in this type of shot. However, identification of a character, the details of their costumes and their body movements are quite visible in this type of shot. Full body of the character or object is visible in this type of shot.
Extreme long shot or very long shot. Extreme long shot provides the remotest perspective or view of a landscape where the cinematic action unfolds. In this shot, the human figures are made into insignificant things because they are dominated or swallowed by their geographical surroundings. Because of the predominance of the landscape, at times the shot is also called geographical shot. Extra long shot is also known as a very long shot. This is also known as the establishment shot because it establishes or fixes the geographical location of the plot. Camera angle and types of shots. Depending on the level or height or the angle of the positioning of the camera, there are at least four possible shots. Such short variations affected through the positioning of the camera with respect to the positioning of the object shot bring in different aesthetics and bodily connotations. Straight angle shot. Straight angle shots normally match with the perception angle of human eye. Therefore, it is also known as eye level shot. It's a kind of natural or neutral shot. This is the most common kind of shot in films. It brings in an aesthetic of normality attached to the character and cinematic situation. With this kind of shot, the spectator will have the feeling that the cinematic subject is directly interacting with them. To represent a factual or neutral situation, straight angle shot is normally used. Low angle shot. While capturing a low angle shot, the camera is positioned below the object so as to make the object look larger and more dominant and in control of the situation and its surroundings. The camera can vertically be positioned right at the feet of the object or anywhere under his eye line. In action thrillers, low angle shots are generally used to enhance the physical power of both the protagonist and the villainy of the anti-hero. High angle shot. In the case of high angle shot, the camera is positioned above the eye line of the object shot. This shot provides a feeling of vulnerability the object undergoes. The object caught in this type of shots conveys a sense of exposure to immediate danger or hazard. Here the object is being put under optical surveillance or visual monitoring by some other person. In a high angle shot, the object conveys a sense of visual imprisonment that it undergoes. Oblique shot or Dutch angle shot. This shot is also called a tilted angle shot or oblique angle shot. An aesthetics of psychological unsettlement or territorial subversion is conveyed through an oblique shot. The horizontal and vertical axis of camera are broken in this type of shot. Most of the German expressionist movies and noir films make plenty use of Dutch angle shot. Camera movement and types of shots. In the early history of cinema, camera movement was very limited, largely thanks to the mammoth size of the mechanical eye. Modern motion picture cinematography, especially with portable camera, makes plenty of use of different possibilities of camera movements, whether the camera is mounted on a platform or handheld. Based on the various types of camera movements, the following major types of shots are possible in movies. Pan shot. Generally in a pan shot, the camera which is fixed on a tripod or any other mount captures the movement of the cinematic object or captures a wide landscape moving the camera from left to right and vice versa. Depending on the speed of the camera panning, you can either have a slow pan or a whip pan. 
a slow pan shot provides the maximum details of the object shots while a whip pan very quickly captures a scene often bringing in an optical and psychological jerk tilt shot by raising and lowering our head we can gather different perspectives of an object especially when the size of the object is huge a tilt shot is achieved by raising and lowering the camera in a vertical axis in a pan shot the camera moves in horizontal axis whereas in a tilt shot the camera moves in a vertical way an upward tilt shot of an object or person taken from the visual perspective of a character makes the character look inferior on the contrary a downward tilt of the same object or person puts the character look into a superior position pedestal shot if the camera is fixed to a pedestal and it moves up and down vertically or sideways horizontally from the perspective of the subject who is looking at something it's called a pedestal shot with each movement its visual brings in new details or provides more details of the object shot zoom shot in all the types of shots achieved through different types of camera movements the camera physically moves however a zoom shot is achieved by reconfiguring the focal length of the camera which can bring the object shot closer to the spectator or take the object farther from the sight of the spectator technically known as zooming in and zooming out respectively tracking shot if the camera moves backward forward or in circular on a track while taking a shot it's known as a tracking shot often the phrase dolly shot is also used to describe such a camera movement this movement makes it possible for the camera to follow a character or to picture the character in a circular fashion of various degrees Shots taken with camera mounted on a moving vehicle are also considered to be tracking shots. Tracking shots bring in more movements in the frame. Shots achieved with cranes and steady cam are also generally considered as tracking shots. Camera masks and types of shots. Details of a visual can be controlled by using different image filters placed in front of the camera lens such objects that cover or restrict the visual plane of the camera lens are generally known as masks two familiar examples of mask shots are there iris shots traditionally iris in shots are used to suggest the opening sequence in a film on the contrary iris out shots suggest the end of a filmic sequence in the silent cinema of early era these types of shots were frequently used at times an iris shot is used to focus on a particular character or object by hiding other objects or characters from the audience's sight to suggest a narrative flashback also iris shots were used at times keyhole shots keyhole shots make use of the keyhole camera mask this suggests the presence of a peeping tom or to suggest the presence of a private eye often the target fixing revolver viewfinder is also used as a camera mask camera focus and types of shots by readjusting the focal length of the camera lens the following major types of shots are possible deep focus in a deep focus shot almost all planes of the frame are given equal focus in this type of shot the spectator's attention is not invited to any particular point in the frame the spectator is given a visual freedom to look at what he prefers to watch in the frame the neutrality of camera in distributing the attention points provides a sense of freedom to the audience many of the shots in the american classic film citizen kane 1941 directed by orson welles are cited as classic examples of deep focus cinematography 
noted French film critic André Bazard was an adamant advocate of deep focus cinematography. Raking focus. By applying the cinematographic technique of focus puller, rake focus sequence can be achieved. In rake focus cinematography, the focus is shifted from one plane to the other during the capturing of a scene. Shallow focus. In shallow focus cinematography, any one of the foreground, midground, or background can be focused, making the other planes shallow or blurred. Thank you for watching the video.